we must read the Bible in its context always. Read the Bible in its context. In one, you know, for example, let me tell you something that in the original New Testament letters as they were written, Paul did not put chapter divisions and verses and all that. No, no, no. That was just a few hundred years ago. People put in these chapters and divisions and verses so that we can refer to something easily. Otherwise, it was a big, long letter. When you write a letter, you don't put chapters and verses. So when you read the Gospels and the New Testament, don't stop at the end of a chapter. Read on, because the thought may be continued into the next verse. Many, many times I've seen that. You stop at one point and you miss the connection with the next chapter. So nowadays when I read the Bible, or not nowadays, for many, many years now, when I read the Bible, I'm reading a chapter, I don't stop at the end of the chapter. I go on to the next few verses and see if there's a connection. And very often there's a connection. And here's one of those examples. Because 1 Timothy 4, we read it earlier, the Spirit explicitly says, that in the latter times, in the last days, some will fall away from the faith, paying attention to deceitful spirits. So, what is the connection? It says, but. But means it's connected to the previous verse. Now we understand something. Now let me connect it to the previous verse. 1 Timothy 3.16 Great is the mystery of godliness. Christ was revealed in the flesh and was pure in his spirit. Now, the Living Bible puts it the best way that I can think of. It says like this. It is true that the way to live a godly life is not an easy matter. That we all agree. But the answer lies in Christ who came as a man and his spirit was pure. See, that's the thing that man has never been able to keep his spirit pure because of his flesh. So the way to live a godly life is not an easy matter because we have a flesh. But the answer lies in Christ who came as a man and kept his spirit pure and even the angels saw it and testified to it. It says in that verse. That is the way to live a godly life. To see the secret of Jesus came in my flesh. No sin in him. But he had a will of his own. Which he denied even in Gethsemane. And thus he lived a godly life. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Denying his will. He lived a holy life. And he calls me also to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Pick up my cross every day. Deny my will. And I can follow him. And then it goes on to say, but, see the connection? But in the last days, the Holy Spirit, some will fall away from this faith. And we see that happening around. How many churches do you feel, or have you come across, that teach that the way to live a godly life is by seeing how Jesus came as a man and overcame? Have you heard that on the internet in any message? Have you heard any church consistently preaching it? We've preached it for 45 years. But the Spirit says in the last days, people will fall away from that faith, fall away from that way of becoming godly. And they will turn aside to deceit, deception. And that's because their own conscience, verse 2, is not sensitive. Their conscience has died. It's like if your skin is branded with iron, that part of the skin dies. And it says your, if your conscience can be branded like that, it becomes dead. And they began to teach. There are other ways to become godly. For example, verse 3, don't get married. There are people teaching that. You want to be holy, don't get married. Or you must fast. Don't eat certain foods. Avoid certain things. And Different ways of becoming godly. All a deception. The real way of becoming godly is 1 Timothy 3.16. To see Christ who came like us and was tempted like us and did not sin. And to ask God to give me revelation on that. 